Hello to all my friends out there. Happy New Year. Well, I was doing a little cooking today, making some festive food for today and tomorrow. So, okay. I hope everyone is having a nice holiday. Uh-oh. Uh, today I was doing a lot of housework. And so for the first of the year, I'm giving myself two little gifts. One, trying to lose weight before my birthday on the 15th. And two, trying to clean the house up a little bit. Because that is going to make the year, you know, nice. But I can't lose weight too fast at my age because there is the flabby issue. I don't care how much you exercise when you're older. So my mother-in-law, God rest her soul, used to make black-eyed peas every year on uh, New Year's Eve. So I made a little batch. And uh, if you hate... Um, if you hate bacon, just make this with, um, with, um, olive oil. Okay, so, this is one cup of dry black-eyed peas. I don't know what I did with them. And then I wash them good in water and check for rocks. And then I soaked them for a few hours. They don't take too long. Then I uh, rinsed them good and covered them with water and brought them to a boil. When they were to a boil, I turned them down. I added one tablespoon dry onion, one half teaspoon garlic powder. I just had to buy some. Uh, this is something I'll be getting a big one. I use it almost every single day. Salt, pepper, and sugar, and two to three pieces of bacon. So that was the first festive thing I made. That was pretty festive. Black eyed peas. That's the southern way you got Southern California. Here's the recipe if you have never made it. And this can be any kind of beans. It doesn't have to be black eyed peas. Black eyed peas are very festive though. Uh, my mother-in-law, here there. My mother-in-law was from Kansas. I don't know what what that was come to think of it okay i have some delicious um english breakfast tea okay so then i made peanut butter and i have a video for you guys on twitter and it turned out really good look at this two cups peanuts okay what happened was the thing that is very, very important is peanuts are storable food. So I bought these nuts and I thought these are going to be all peanuts. What the hell am I going to do with them? Well, guess what? Peanut butter cookies, peanut butter, buttery peanut butter granola yesterday. But the main thing about this is during like some, the reason we're preppers is for one to two reasons. If we, if we need to eat out of our stockpile, like if we want to save money or, you know, if, you know, we want to be healthy, we're going to get some cheap protein. I'd say it would be a good idea to, uh, to stock up, I will be buying some big bags of peanuts in the shell. Two cups peanuts, roast at 215 minutes and then turn. So you don't have to remove the peel until after you roast them. Then you place the peanuts in a dish towel and you roll them up and then you just roll them around on the counter and the peels come off. But be careful because it's quite the mess. Then place Put them in a blender on low after you remove the skin. So roasting makes all the difference, you guys. All the difference. So um, you're blending first on low, and if it gets stuck on the side, just push it towards the metal. Then you'll see it start to turn into peanut butter. Turn it up on high and blend it. 
So you can make peanut butter sandwiches, but I want to make a little um, salad. Okay, I, I mentioned to you guys that I went to the gym and uh, I have been learning so much. I've been so fortunate. People used to say I was lucky and I thought, yeah, lucky nothing. You should follow me around. I work my you know what up, but it is luck. Okay, so I found this video, Diet Workout Mindset, and full interview with Ernestine Shepard. She is like a 80-year-old bodybuilder. Melissa Neal, Longer Healthier Life. Okay, so one of her meals is chicken breast. No skin, but mine has skin. Romaine, lettuce, carrots, and celery. So... Carrots and celery are a good choice. For one thing, they don't wilt and go bad in your... Okay, so I want, I have this salad dressing from my salad that did wilt and go bad. And I'll just put it in this yogurt cup. I've been saving these. And so they're coming in handy. Because I like to dip my um, carrots in this good salad dressing. Jack in the box. Okay, so now, uh, so, okay, so we have chicken breast, carrots, and celery. And then we have another good one that just fits in with my um, meal. Chicken, broccoli, and lima beans. So instead of lima beans, I'm having, um, I'm having um, black eyed peas and I'm having chicken and rice. So here is barbecue chicken and rice. I'm gonna eat this tomorrow, it's way too late. It is three tablespoons white rice. That's one serving. And then I bought these uh, chicken legs. Uh, I don't know, uh, smart and final, remember? 10 pounds for 7.50. And this was two chicken legs and there's a back there. So I counted that as one meal for tomorrow. So it's beans, rice, and chicken. And now I am going to, you know, make use of my, um, of my celery with a little of my peanut butter. Uh, today I had a couple of uh, flatbreads, so I had peanut butter and jam. That was quite tasty. Okay, so so it was festive at my house. I hope it was as festive as you could be doing a lot of housework. So I will just put this um, peanut butter on as I eat these. But okay, so you get the idea. And then I mentioned to you guys that I started buying pickled vegetables. Uh, so I, I think I bought these about a month ago. And what you can do with these two is like where you would have your vegetable, you know, your chicken, your rice, and your vegetable. You can heat these in the oven. So um, they're good cold too though. So, um, The prepping is not just for uh, worrying about the future. It's about saving money and living better right now. So what I'm trying to do, and which I did pretty successfully, and then you have the jars. I bought this at Walmart. So that was actually a lot. How much was this? This was... Um, one half gallon of vegetables, storable. So all the food is pretty much storable and you can dip your cauliflower as well. So if you had to go somewhere, this, I, I guarantee you this, this peanut butter would be a good, a big hit. So, okay, moving right along here. Let me tell you, all this cooking was quite the mess, but that is okay because I have to ring in the new year. 
And thank you guys for following me. And thank you for all the nice comments you guys have made. I'm thinking uh, I will just put my uh, black eyed peas in here since I'll probably eat it tomorrow for lunch. Uh, for the next, uh, for today and tomorrow, I'm not going to the gym. I'm, I'm, it's a holiday. I'm doing housework. I really know how to have a good time, huh? Okay, let me give you a shot of these meals that this woman was gracious enough to uh, do the YouTube video on. Um, some of the um, bodybuilders spend an incredible amount of money on their food, like um, $160 for uh, two or three days. So then, now this is the biggie. This is the biggie. I made potato bread. Here it is with no yeast. And this is really good. I already ate some. I don't need to be eating more bread. And then this is some festive potato bread cinnamon rolls. Because on holidays, I like to eat like um, cinnamon bread or cake. So let me give you a shot of this. So uh, were any of you ready to go cuckoo when there was no yeast? during the COVID, well, no use going cuckoo. All right, so what I did was, just like the peanuts, oh, here's the black eyed peas. So I must have had two cups in here. And uh, oh, I also have some, some croutons for my uh, salad. And here is the uh, Walmart rice. I'm just eating white rice. The bodybuilder, they, they eat brown rice a lot. But here are the instant potatoes. Okay, when I made this, there is a video and I will give it to you. It's going to work a lot better if you use a potato rather than potato flakes. And these are unseasoned potato. This is... This is a lot of potatoes, five pounds of potatoes. So as soon as finances permit, start buying the big cans and bags of food. Okay, so um, what I did is it was one small potato. It was supposed to be one small potato, but I used a quarter cup of of instant potatoes, three quarter cups water and cook. And then uh, add more water to create watery potatoes. So I added another quarter cup after I cooked the quarter cup potatoes and three quarter cups water, I added another quarter cup. Then you add one teaspoon sugar and you let that cool. Then you add one tablespoon flour and you leave it covered for about 12 hours and you're supposed to take it outside and, and let it get the fresh air in 10 minute increments. But what I did is I put my saucepan in the oven because you know usually things ferment better in a warm environment. And so then I just left it there until I got up I didn't have the lid on tight, so I could see a few bubbles. And I thought, you know, I made this before, and it was pretty flat. So you can see I've improved a lot. And this will get better the more times you make it. So I said to myself, okay, I added another teaspoon at, of sugar. And at that time, several bubbles came up, so I knew I was moving in the right direction this time. So then I got my potato bread uh, recipe. And so I had a cup of water with the instant potatoes and the sugar and uh, the, um, the flour. And I was only making a half batch. 
so I didn't add the milk. I added one teaspoon of salt and one teaspoon of sugar, and I took uh, one half cup of water, and I got that to about 100 degrees. And this time, I used my um, thermometer that I bought at Dollar Tree to make sure my my yeast was going to take right. So it was warm at 100 degrees. I added a half cup water, and then I had um, some uh, yeast, some rapid rise yeast. And I added that in, in a bowl and I covered it to activate my yeast. So then um, I wanted to make a very, very soft dough because I remember that this stuff uh, rises very, very slow. So I mixed um, the, the one cup potato water and then I had the yeast with a half cup water and a teaspoon of water so I didn't need to add any more sugar and then I added the salt to flour little by little and then I created a very soft dough like sticky soft and then I learned this on a pizza making video I got one tablespoon of olive oil and I I poured that around the, the, the yeast was in the middle and I poured it around the edges and then I just started folding it in and then I put flour and I put the dough on and I just flipped it around to get a very soft dough and I made the cinnamon rolls. I rolled the, the dough out and I had a quarter cup of cinnamon and um, one tablespoon no, a quarter cup sugar and one tablespoon cinnamon. And then I had a little bit of that um, cream cheese that I had made. So I spread that on there, some butter and the cinnamon and sugar. And I rolled it up and then I let, and I made a small loaf. And, and it took a long time to uh, rise. I let it double in size. So here is the recipe bearing in mind that I had the potato instant. If, if I had used a regular potato, I might have been able to go without the yeast. But when in doubt, I would just use the yeast. So then I made that. But that is not all, because it is a holiday. All right? I absolutely insist on having a good time. Then what did I make? I made peanut butter fudge. Yes, it's a holiday. Dieting is neurotic on a holiday. Um, I made this fudge at Christmas and I put marshmallows on top, but this is 100% better. Oh, let me see if I can chip out a little piece. Here it is peanut butter fudge. And I didn't have my good Colombian chocolate. I made half a batch. One and three cups sugar, two thirds cups milk. I use evaporated milk. Marshmallows, one and a half cup, bring to a boil and turn and simmer on low for five minutes. In the olden days, we used to do it that way. But I used my thermometer and I brought it to 235 to 245. And uh, then I added six tablespoons butter and one cup chocolate chips. But I just used uh, this stuff because that's what I had. And then I put that in the hot boiling um, sugar, milk, and marshmallows, and I stirred that around. Then I got my um, homemade peanut butter, and I put a quarter cup because I made a half a batch. And uh, I stirred until it was smooth, and then I turned the heat off and added some vanilla. So let me give you this recipe. Uh, you guys make the uh, peanut butter. It's really easy. Um, I have a lot of peanut butter, but um, 
I might make up the rest of this peanut but peanuts into peanut butter. I should have given you a better shot. And then I can always freeze it. Um, in the bodybuilding way, one of the things you can have is peanut butter toast. Like if you want a snack, instead of ruining your diet, just have some, um, a peanut butter uh, toast. Okay. I have been retired since I, for seven years. I retired when I was 62 and I'm going to be 69. I told you guys I was going to be 70 because I didn't know what age I was. Um, so now I want to talk about this coming year and what I want to do is I want to prosper just like I did last year. Okay, if you don't have much money, you can still prosper. You just can't prosper as fast as somebody who has a lot of money. So um, when I was 16 years old in uh, high school, they said, who, go, who wants to be you know, on the, the, the morning reports? Who wants to be a hairstylist, go to room such and such? I went, I said that was for me. So um, I started going to beauty college part-time. So I've like been a hairstylist my entire life. My son said, uh, retire which I thought was a mistake, but now looking back seven years ago, he was right because there's quite the adjustment. But what really attracted me to the hairstylist life was, it's like a lifestyle. Like you get into the hair and that's all there is to your life. And that was my life. Then I studied nursing 10 plus years. I went to LVN school. EMT and phlebotomist, and I, I don't carry a license in anything. Then I did YouTube for, tw and the, the medical uh, has really been beneficial. It really has. YouTube, uh, 12 years, and finally I got a B minus rating. Now there are successful people out there. I don't try to compete. I just put my stuff out there because I'm pretty much convinced that people could benefit by some of the stuff I post. Then recently I and I joined, and this was like another the luckiest day of my life. All of these things I'm mentioning to you were like the luckiest day of my life that I decided to do. I'm, I'm going to choose gym and I go, I think I would like to, to join your gym. They said, it's okay, it's $9.98 a month. I said, okay. And then, um, one of the employees was actually a bodybuilding competition winner. There are several personal trainers that are nothing but gracious, and they have won bodybuilding competitions. And uh, I told the ladies there, I'm just trying to get slender, never once thinking about getting lean. But what I discovered is this Gym lifestyle is like the hairdressing. It's a way of life. You get into it, you're healthy, and uh, so, and it's not expensive. Then I uh, have been into prepping, not because I'm a doomsday, although it's always a possibility. My family was Mormon. They were run out of Nauvoo. They came from Switzerland to Canada to Nauvoo to Utah on foot. And there are reports that at times their provisions ran low. Mormons all have food storage. What does that mean their provisions ran low? No food, you guys. The other side was 13 orphan children. Now that is crap, especially for the father my mother's mother was the daughter of a doctor who delivered 13 children and ended up with a dead daughter and 13 orphan children. Now that is crap. It can happen. Anything can happen any day. So 
I would suggest maybe your life is peachy, but it can turn crappy in a second. Okay, um, and then saving and making the most of your resources. That's what we're going to be doing this, um, this year. They say there's two kinds of spenders, the kinds that spend now and the kind that spend later. That is so true. You, you need so much stuff. I mean, you don't need to make this much stuff in one day, but it's cheap as hell. Okay. Now, look at other people in the world and say, what would I do? Well, one of the smartest things would be stockpile water and food. Okay, and then I learned this uh, meal prepping at the gym that you're going to eat better, you're going to feel better if you just make yourself one of these meals and stick them. I don't do it for a whole week. I just do like two meals at a time. I might, I don't know. Okay, the lowest price on everything. So I needed gym clothes. I bought those at the thrift store. I located the cheapest possible gym shoes are um, Walmart on sale. Okay, now I'm working on this thing. Be your own personal stylist, but be your own and fill in the blank. Whatever you want to do, interior design, floral arrangements, or investments. Whatever you want to do, do your own. Okay, so last month, okay, so it's the first of the month. Last month, I bought 10 pounds of chicken legs and thighs. I bought three pounds of hot dogs. I bought a ham. I sliced that. I have turkey. I have tuna and I have cans of salmon. So I have meat. I have rice. I have potatoes. I have veggies, all kinds. Okay. All right. Stockpiling allows one to drastically reduce grocery and money expenditure. So let's say you have a grocery budget of 40 or $50 a week, and you can somehow make some of this cheap food and save $10 a week. The next week you're gonna have $240. And then if you did that for two months, you had $280. You go down to the Costco and you spend it. Then you can go a while without buying food. Or you can just pick up something that's a good deal. I will be buying uh, big bags of detergent for sure. I bought a lot of, of cooking oil. That's another thing. So just be thinking, what might I possibly run out of? Okay. Now, here are the videos uh, that I posted on Twitter because some of my followers said they couldn't uh, find it. And then I want to mention this um, here eBay image search. Okay, so like if you have an eBay business and you want to determine the value of your item, you can do an image search. You can look it up. It's very easy to do. So that is going to help me a lot. Like if I wanted to find out um, how much this brass bowl was, if like I was really desperate for money, no, I would take it with me in the trunk. But let's say if I wanted to sell it, I do the image search and all the brass bowls that look like this are going to come up and then I can price mine. Or if I want to buy something in the thrift store with the idea of selling it, I can do the image search and then I can say, well, is it worth the money? So that you don't buy stuff that's virtually um, valueless. Uh, actually, these at one time, I bought this is a cute clock. I this is this is a really nice clock. I bought a bunch of them. My son's got two in the bonus room. But I mean I bought like a lot. And I could sell them. I don't want to, but you know, you just do it's called image search. You go to e eBay, you hit image search and you take a, a snapshot of the item. So I wanted to mention that because I know some of my followers, you know, sometimes I do uh, eBay. All right, one more thing. K 
California has signed into law sewage can be converted into drinking water. But on your bottles, I don't know what I did. Here's a Kroger water bottle. You can look up the origin of the product. And the origin of this product is, um, this is good water. Uh, I'm not gonna be buying water at the kiosks because they're probably already doing it. Ohio, Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, here are the states to be avoided if you don't want this water. California, December 19th, Colorado, Arizona, and Florida developing. So also you can check your, uh, you can check your uh, origin of your food. Like if you go to Dollar Tree and you want to know where is this food from. Okay, you guys, happy new year and God bless you all.